Okay, so this is um, about glycolysis. Um, a couple of little things just to remember. I put this one at the top. Um, little mnemonic to help you remember it. G G F H tip, which is going to be the initial letters of the um, chemicals to use. If you can remember that, it becomes fairly straightforward to then remember um, all the various steps. Okay, so glycolysis. We start off with um, glucose, a six-carbon sugar. Come across this plenty of times. What we're going to try and do is, um, and, and this is worth keeping in mind all the way through respiration, it's about breaking down this molecule, or, or more specifically, oxidising it through a series of steps. So whenever we use um, an arrow like this, what we're really saying is there's a, a, a chemical reaction going on, and it will be an enzyme-controlled reaction. So the first step we have is glucose, G, is converted to um, glucose 6 phosphate. Now this step, as I mentioned, is an enzyme control step. You don't have to remember what the enzymes are, but we'll throw them in here anyway. Um, the group of enzymes, or the family of enzymes, that are involved in um, adding phosphate groups on are called kinases. Okay, so you could actually call it... Um, glucophosphokinase if you wanted, but it's a kinase enzyme. You don't need to remember it for the syllabus, but we'll throw that in. Um, this step requires uh, ATP because we've added a phosphate group, and that, that has to come from somewhere. So we go from ATP, triphosphate, to ADP, <laughs> diphosphate, um, and that phosphate has been added onto our glucose, so we've phosphorylated our glucose. Uh, the next step, and this is the one run that's uh, written incorrectly in your book, we go from G to G to F, so fructose 6-phosphate. This is the one that in your book says fructose 1-phosphate, which is incorrect. Now, just look at what's happened here. Have we added any more phosphate groups? No, we haven't. Has anything been taken out? Have we lost any carbon dioxide, for example, any hydrogen? No, we haven't. So it's gone from one molecule to another, nothing's been added, nothing's been taken away. It's basically then an isomer. And the enzyme, or the family of enzymes involved in this, are called isomerases. So glucose and fructose, they're both six carbon um, molecules. If we were to draw them, for example, uh, if you remember from biochemistry, this is basically what the glucose looks like. Uh, the 6-phosphate refers to the fact that on the 6th carbon, you've got the phosphate group. Okay, And if I was to draw um, fructose, which is also a 6-carbon compound, even though it looks like it's a pentagon shape, it is actually a, a hexose, and the phosphate group would be on here. So from there, we go from fructose 6-phosphate, so our H, which in your books is given as um, hexose. It is actually um, another form of fru uh, fructose in there. Um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Why bisphosphate? No, why not biphosphate or diphosphate even? Um, what it's referring to here is that the fructose bisphosphate has got two phosphate groups, but they're not connected to each other. It's not like an ATP, where you have um, you know, your ribose, sugar, and your adenosine, then you have the, the three phosphate groups, and they're all connected together. Um, the phosphate groups are separated. That's why it's bisphosphate. Uh, so glucose to glucose to fructose. Now we've added another phosphate on, because we've now got two phosphate groups. So... Let's just put this in. And there we go, there's our extra phosphate group. Why do we bother with these um, phosphorylated bits? Again, that, um, sorry, we could add that that's a kinase. Why do we bother phosphorylating to start with? Um, two reasons. These are nice questions to get asked, actually. Here, the reason we phosphorylate this glucose is it makes it more difficult for the glucose to leak back out of the cell. Um, you don't have the transporter proteins for in the membrane to get glucose 6-phosphate through. So it helps to build up more glucose inside the cell where it's needed. 
this step here, as well as, I suppose, um, giving you, you two phosphate groups so that when we break this down into two triases, they're both phosphorylated. Um, adding the phos extra phosphate group destabilizes this molecule. It makes it easier for it to be broken apart, if you like. Okay. Once we've got past here, coming down to the next step, we go to our two lots of triose phosphate. Now this step, remember that for every step underneath here, we've got two of each thing. So we've got two triose phosphates through two, three carbon um, compounds. In fact, these two will not be identical. If you uh, look at the structure, sorry, of um, the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, uh, it doesn't evenly slice in half. You don't get two identical um, molecules. They're, they're both isomers of each other, but they're not identical. In fact, they flip between the two forms. We go then, this is the nice step, we can just say intermediates. It might be worthwhile here, um, keeping in mind that there are actually two. In the book, it doesn't mention this, but might actually help you to, to think, yeah, there's two lots of everything beyond here. What's going on this bit? Um, a lot of reactions. The, the things that um, the molecules here don't last for very long. Um, so we, we just refer to them as intermediates. You don't need to know what these um, extra things are. And finally, we end up with two lots, which are red here, of pyruvate. These are the steps I think that people, um, these are the bits where, where we've got the coenzymes in ATP that people tend to uh, mess up on. So let's just try and get this in our heads what's happening. We brought in some phosphates here. In changing between triose phosphates and these intermediates, enough energy is released that we can generate um, ATP. Now if you remember back when we talked about um, ATP before, uh, and we said how for each of these two phosphate groups, so for example, AMP, um, don't put me adenosine in there. there we go. Every time we break that one off, it requires 30.6 kilojoules um, of energy to make a, a mole of ADP into ATP. That's how much it requires, 30.6 kilojoules per mole. As we're going through these steps, it sometimes is the case that you do release more, uh, you release some energy, but unless it's at least 30.6 kilojoules, you can't use that to, to synthesize more ATP. So for example, if only, I don't know, 14.2 kilojoules was released, you couldn't get ADP to go to ADP, ATP. What happens at 14.2 kilojoules? It's lost. Um, in the form of heat, essentially. It just so happens that at this step, we do have enough so that we can um, form ATP. And remember that because it's two steps here, we get two lots of ATP. So for each triose going to the intermediate, you'd get one ATP, but because we've got two on the go, we'd get two ATP. That's my phone going. Um, at this step as well, we also get ATP produced. Exactly the same idea. It just so happens that there's enough energy released at that point um, to synthesize more ATP. The step that people always forget is this one. And it's that we get two lots of reduced nicotinamide adenosine dinucleotide, um, or reduced NADs, we'll call it here. Okay? Now... This, I think, is also worth working through, and I've been through this, this with some of you. Um, reduced NAD is, or NAD is a coenzyme. Now, it's sometimes, I think, helpful if we write it like that, NAD+, plus, um, which shows that when we pick up hydrogens, and we actually pick up two of them, notice how I've written that. I've not written it, um, I haven't written it H2, I haven't written it as um, a hydrogen molecule, it picks up two hydrogens. We could then say it's become reduced. Remember, reduction is gaining electrons. What those hydrogens do is they donate those electrons um, to this coenzyme, if you like. 
you may also see it written like this when it's become reduced. So you may see it on other sources written like that, or you may see it written like this. Okay. Um, I would recommend sticking with this one simply because it's a bit easier. These ones are fine because it shows you that actually it's there's two hydrogens removed here. One last useful thing, perhaps it's worth here looking at how we get to this pyruvate. Um, we know that we've got two triose uh, molecules here. Now remember we started off originally with um, glucose, C6H12O6. Uh, we haven't got rid of any carbons here, we haven't got rid of excuse me, any oxygens. We have got rid of hydrogens, but we'll come to that in a second. We converted it into trioses. So we can imagine it's just saying, well, it's C3H6O3, because that's half of that, if you like. So I've got two lots of that on the go. I'm using the empirical formula here. I think it's easy just to, to follow that through. By the time we get to from those trioses to pyruvate, though, we've got two lots of reduced NAD. In other words, we've removed two lots of this, four hydrogen in total. So we must have lost a total of four hydrogen from this by the time we reach pyruvate. And in fact, if you work it out, we haven't lost any more carbons, we haven't lost any oxygens. We've got two lots of that, we take away four carbons, you end up with H4. Remember, because there's two lots of it, there was H12, so effectively we've gone down to two lots of um, H4 or H8, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and one last point, remember this thing with pyruvate and pyruvic acid, you will see, particularly people who do, um, if you do PE, you'll come across this form of it a lot. What's the difference? Well, technically, um, the pyruvate has actually lost, or it's become ionised, so it would actually be, um, oh, completely wrong. it would have done this. Okay, so technically that is pyruvic acid. Pyruvate is when it's um, become ionised in solution because you won't, won't get pyruvic acid um, in the body. It will ionise to pyruvate. So that's the only difference, really. Um, I have a feeling if you put pyruvic acid rather than pyruvate, I don't think anyone will mind. Um, if you remember to put pyruvate, no, that's better. In the same way, citrate and citric acid, exactly the same idea. Lactate, lactic acid. It just means that you've ionised this last hydrogen. Yeah.